Welcome to the first of our 2018 review shows. Sorry, where are my manners? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. This is EV News Daily for Boxing Day. It's Wednesday the 26th of December. My name is Martin Lee, and I thought we'd take a couple of days to look back over the year that we've had. Now, that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's no news going on today. I mean, I'm sure there's something somewhere, but there's not going to be a load of news coming out of the world of EVs over the next couple of days, which is why yesterday we had a brilliant interview with one of the supporters of this show. He looks after big solar and energy storage installations commercially, Phil Roberts from Electric Future. That was yesterday's interview, if you missed it on Christmas Day. However, from today going forward, what I thought we'd do is look back at the year we've had Whenever I do our interviews, our Saturday specials, if you like, there is something which comes through... Everyone says this, whether it's so explicitly or not, but everyone working in EV sector and all of this area that surrounds it, like energy and solar and storage, everyone says it is breathless at the moment in terms of how much is going on. And so what I thought we would do is just take a little look back at the year that we've had so far to remind ourselves of, firstly, uh, what's happened, but also to put into perspective the kind of things that we've been enjoying in 2018 and what we can look forward to moving forward. This podcast started in January last year. We're almost up to a year. So I thought we could go back as well in a year of EV News dailies. Well, back in January of 2018, we were hearing about the BMW iNext and its 435-mile range. We were hearing about Nissan announcing a new vehicle-to-grid solar project. China had sold over 700,000 EVs. And Electrify America announced their plans to roll out chargers across the US. Fully Charged finally got inside the Jaguar I-Pace. And the Renault Zoe ZE40 made its debut in India. Later in January, news outlets, websites and magazines were finally allowed to publish their previously embargoed reports of the new Nissan Leaf. About five or six of them all hit the internet at midnight on one day. Uh, The new Nissan Leaf was reviewed and the Tesla Model 3 configurator was updated to show good signs of how the $35,000 model would eventually arrive. All these months later, we haven't seen it yet. But maybe we will. Franz von Holhausen. Holhausen is the chief designer of Tesla. And he was seen charging a Model 3. And it had red brake calipers. And it looked like it could be a performance edition. And back in January last year, we got very excited about the performance edition of the Model 3. The Kia Soul EV got new battery chemistry. Mercedes announced plans to stop selling diesel. And London's taxi drivers were getting excited about electric taxis. Elon Musk in January revealed details of potential future compensation, which would make him the world's richest man. And we heard about a new survey which said EV drivers save more money than anyone else thanks to clever time-of-use tariffs at home. Also in January, VW were announcing details of their EV investment, and that would be a theme of 2018. No cars to show apart from some hybrids and the Golf GTE, which, uh, sorry, the e-Golf, which you couldn't buy for love and money some, in some countries. However, many announcements would be made across 2018 of VW's investment, which is coming. It's coming. Jam tomorrow. On the 26th of January, we heard that the Model 3 camera had already been improved from the early models. And on the same day, the new Nissan Leaf configurator had gone live for those getting hold of their car. In the UK, the Renault Zoe won the Best Car Award on the 26th of January. And Mercedes-Benz CEO stepped forward to say that in India, they foresee a hydrogen future, not electric. On the 28th of January last year, a new Californian executive order set a 2030 target for electric cars, and then Colorado would immediately follow suit. And a housing developer in the UK promised that all future developments that they would build would all include wiring and the installation ready for every single house on the estate to have electric car charging points. On the 29th of January, we saw a custom shooting break Tesla, a P90D, and it blew many people's minds. And European EV sales figures had showed Renault beating Tesla with their model of cheap city runaround cars. 
On the 30th of Jan, Mitsubishi hit the 100,000 sales mark for their Outlander plug-in hybrid, and Volvo revealed their all-electric EV to Autocar magazine. On the 31st of Jan, Audi e-tron started taking deposits for their car, which wouldn't be out for at least a year, and the 1,000 Nissan vehicle-to-grid installations were installed as a trial project to sell electricity back to the grid. Moving on to February, and on the 1st of Feb, the very first Jaguar I-Pace reviews hit the internet. Meanwhile, Mercedes announced an 11 billion euro investment in their EV projects. London's famous black cabs announced they would be heading to Norway to sell theirs there. And on the 3rd of February, the now infamous Tesla Model 3 teardown hit the internet. That was way back in February. On the 4th of February, we were hearing about a new Tesla referral scheme with a giant-sized bonus. And it's funny how referral schemes with Tesla have been an ongoing story of 2018. Even today, or it was yesterday, maybe it was over Christmas, uh, Tesla announced that they would, surprise, surprise, extend the Model 3 referral scheme. But this time with an added bonus that you'd get even more free supercharging if you didn't take a test drive before ordering and taking delivery of your new Model 3. On the 5th of February earlier this year, Nissan confirmed four new pure electric cars would be made within five years. And what's happened since then? Well, their leader, their big proponent of EVs, Carlos Ghosn, is currently spending Christmas and New Year locked away whilst he fights for his innocence. On the 6th of February, sales figures came through for the first part of 2018. UK electric car sales were up by 25% and diesel sales fell rapidly again. On the 7th of Feb, we heard about how a Hyundai EV had been spotted, the Elentra, and speculated about what Hyundai could be doing in 2018. Meanwhile, VW of North America announced they were starting to look for factories for EVs. Boy, how that story would move on in 2018 as well. On the 9th of Feb... BYD buses were ad arriving in London to electrify London's famous red buses and their fleet of cars, while Geely would take a big financial stake in Daimler, but not officially doing it. Uh, they were just buying up stock, as it were, as Geely expand their EV plans, but also look for a partnership with one of those big established automakers and set their sights in February on working with Daimler. On the 10th of Feb, we heard that BMW were launching their iX3 in 2019. That would be a plug-in hybrid version of the iX3 alongside a full version as well. And Subaru announced electrifying plans using Toyota parts. Of course, naturally, being a partner with Toyota. And Tesla on the 10th of February were talking about how they've used their... Groman engineering acquisition from a year ago to add efficiency to the Model 3 lines. The Volkswagen ID on the 11th of Feb earlier this year was confirmed for 2019 production. And meanwhile, a new European fast charging network and it was announced, backed by Renault-Nissan. On the 12th of Feb, Jeremy Clarkson reviewed the Tesla Model X for the Grand Tour and was somewhat of a fan, but couldn't let it go without some unjustified criticism and rumours of a world rallycross electric stage were gathering pace. The Porsche Mission E production was announced on the 13th of Feb this year that it will be increased to cope with so much demand and on the 14th of February, happy Valentine's Day, Daimler announced they were investing in a subsidiary of BAIC as their love towards the Chinese market grew as well. Well, halfway through the month in February, big news came out of Dyson here in the UK. Yes, them of vacuum cleaner fame. They've got a big EV program, if you didn't know. And they were rumoured to be launching their EVs with solid-state batteries, having made a big acquisition in a solid-state company. Then, we heard halfway through February, things weren't going quite as well, and that maybe the first EV they launched would be with lithium-ion batteries, and then they would move on to solid-state after that. 
On the 16th of February, the world saw the Tesla Roadster when it went on display at the Palo Alto headquarters. And Bloomberg, back on the 16th of February, would invent a tool for the internet to estimate weekly production rates of Model 3s. It was only in February they did that. And since then, so many news websites and outlets have been using that Bloomberg tool almost daily to look at the Model 3 production and go, how's it going? How's it going? As it increased. On the 17th of Feb, there was a new rebate system announced for California and wireless charging heading to the new outfit that was called Electra Mechanica. In 2017, they sold 600,000 EVs around the world and we heard that stat on the 18th of February. Meanwhile, the Nissan Leaf was still pretty new but always already getting nominations on the 18th of Feb, nominated for the World Car Award. A video clip of Tesla's new Roadster testing at Fremont made its way onto the internet on the 19th of Feb earlier this year and since then people have been so excited about the new Tesla Roadster which will be the new Halo car and by that phrase I mean it'll have the longest range, the best performance, the biggest battery of not only any EV but actually beating all ICE cars as well. On the 20th of Feb at the Geneva Motor Show Volkswagen unveiled their concept for an EV future. It was called the ID Vision. And on the 21st of Feb, we heard that the new London electric cabs were going to become vans as well. And the Mitsubishi Outlander was refreshed. A moderate battery bump for the very popular plug-in hybrid. BP would publish a report on the 21st of Feb that says EVs are being driven twice as much as ICE cars, such as the, the love that people have for their electric cars. They just can't stop driving them. Of course, later in 2018, BP would make a rather large investment and buy the UK's biggest charging network, Chargemaster. On the 22nd of February, the UK High Court ruled on illegal pollution, saying that EVs were the answer and forcing cities to invest in better infrastructure for EVs. Also on the same day, 23rd of Feb last year, 22nd of Feb last year, Daimler, or Daimler, the uh, head of their programme that's looking after trucks, would make that now famous quote about throwing doubt on Tesla's semi-truck technology, saying that the same laws of uh, physics, or was it chemistry, I'm paraphrasing, exist in Germany as they do in America. They sort of wheeled back on that quote slightly after when maybe they realised that Tesla weren't inflating those figures and that maybe they would launch a semi-truck with those stats. And uh, that was a, a, a quote that would come back to haunt them many times over the year. On the 23rd of February last year, uh, this year, we heard about how Renault were developing a power project for a remote island to use EVs as battery storage and solar power as well to make the island completely fossil free. On the 24th of Feb, we heard news in the UK that a, a company called Podpoint were launching 150 kilowatt rapid chargers for the UK. I can't say I've ever been to one of those myself. Meanwhile, Tesla announced on the 24th of Feb that the semi-truck would have an 18-month payback. On the 25th of February, profits were up for VW, which gave them confidence to move forward with their EV plans. And on the 26th of Feb, a new generation Ford Focus was announced that will feature an electric drivetrain. Much hope back in February for Ford... And 2018 just didn't deliver for Ford, really. On the 27th of Feb, a couple of days till the end of the month, the Jaguar I-Pace was given an official launch date. The Tesla share price was soaring so much more than it is now. And a Swedish company called Unity were on their crowdfunding journey. Wow, how much changed for them in 2018 as well. It's been a, a fabulous year. And on the last day of February... A landmark ruling in Germans in German court allowed those court those cities to ban polluting diesels. Well, that wouldn't be the end of it. That legal battle would rumble on. It would take until the end of 2018 for the ruling to be upheld, and for those uh, by the EU, by the way, and for those cities to now be able to start banning polluting diesels. And finally, the Hyundai Kona Electric was revealed in an online presentation on the 28th of February earlier this year. And what a year it was for Hyundai with that Kona being a fabulous car. I hope you've enjoyed the first part of our look back at 2018. And I've reminded you about some of those stories that you think, was that really this year? It seems like ages ago. Or maybe you're thinking, 
Well, that was five minutes ago. We'll continue our journey through 2018 as this week goes on. Thank you so much for downloading our holiday editions of the podcast. If you want to join in with this week's question of the week, I'd love to hear from you. Whether you're an EV owner or not, please contribute. Thanks to myev.com. They have asked you this week, what is your EV highlight, your one EV highlight of 2018? So I hope that these, these review shows, these best of shows, in a way, help you answer the question by reminding you of things that you were like, oh, blimey, I forgot that actually happened. You can go onto myev.com if you want to click on research at the top and use the forums there, or you can email me personally, hello at evnewsdaily.com is my email address. That's hello at evnewsdaily.com. Use the YouTube and Facebook comments if you'd like to. Whether you're an EV owner or not, what's been your EV highlight of 2018? We'll read out the best ones on Sunday's show. In the meantime, thank you to everyone who's a Patreon supporter. I've got some new supporters to say thank you to later on in the week. We're up to 148 now, and I'd love to get to 150 by the end of the year. But hey, it's totally optional. I always want to. I always want to remind you. It's totally optional. I make the show anyway. But if you can help it, help me make it. Uh, Patreon.com/slash EV News daily for like 10 bucks a month it's like a super posh coffee with some cream on top uh, you get to support creation of content which thousands of people around the world listen to and educate them about evs and maybe even help them make the ultimate switch the jump to an electric car this show has happened all year and if you want to get any of those back episodes the interviews the specials they're all online for free thanks to we can do that thanks to patreon with the hosting uh, that it provides uh, just on your usual podcast app search ev news daily or if you want to find it on youtube it's on there as well in the meantime i am off over the holidays and if you want to catch up on the socials on facebook linkedin and twitter just search ev news daily have a wonderful day for more of the catch-up shows i'll catch you tomorrow